Hello, my name is Arthur. In this video, we're going to have a look at how to make this graphic for Godot. And what I have is a helicopter. He doesn't function fully. He's not able to shoot or detect enemies. He can travel to a location and return home and land. So we're going to look at the sprite sheets and how to generate them in Blender. And we're going to assume that that certain things can be gotten from other of my videos like the camera setup for isometric rendering I have a video covering that so we don't want to regurgitate that in this video the same as how to assemble the actual sprite sheet in GIMP I would suggest checking out the creating a sprite sheet for the soldier character or the tank character. I've done that a couple of times already. And this one was done in the same way, rotating the camera in the light and taking a series of images for for the sprite sheet. In this example, I used only five of the eight directions and three of the directions come from flipping horizontally in Godot. So this involves a minimized sprite sheet. For the animation, it's only two frames of animation and the animation only applies to the routers. How it was created was I keyed in the at rest rotation, pulled that keyframe below zero, advanced the time bar and rotated along the appropriate axes by um, 540 degrees so a rotation and a half um, with two frames of animation set I start the animation playing and I simply slide one of the keyframes around until I get an effect that looks good. The important settings for the render of the of the blades of the rotor is that the keyframes do not exist inside of the rendered animation and the render setting motion blur is enabled. I used the shutter time of 0.75. So basically I render images of the rotors in five directions, the body in five directions and the helicopter shadow in five directions. Notable in the facing up and facing down directions, the tail rotor is not rendered because it's hiding within the housing, but because they're rendered by themselves, it would show in the draw order used in Godot to make the propeller work. So that isn't rendered in the up and the down facing directions. Um, how we select what's rendered is in the object properties tab. We just toggle what we want to render on and off. And for the shadow catching plane, everything is set to render, including the shadow catcher. And the helicopter is just lifted out of the scene, which I made an animation to make that easy. So I render a shadow in five directions. That's the only time that the shadow catcher is turned on because we don't want the shadow in the image with the body alone and we don't want the shadow in the image with the propellers. So we assemble those in the same fashion as in the previous video into three sprite sheets. They're very simple sprite sheets. This is it for the helicopter body, the helicopter shadow, and for the rotors. And we can see the tail rotor appearing in the final images. And it's notable without a tail rotor that we could get away with two frames of animation for the entire helicopter animation set because this um, main rotor doesn't change location at all in the image frame and this is what you get from setting the motion blur setting in blender instead of 
solid blades, you get a motion blurred blade. And that's the whole of the animation in Godot. So we have the tank. It has a turret, the soldier. And the only difference between these units is I haven't given the helicopter its muzzle. So it doesn't even know where its rocket turrets are. And the helicopter consists of three sprite sheets. The shadow is drawn on the bottom, the body is drawn in the middle, and the rotor is drawn on top. For the animations, I'm not sure the way that I've organized the script that I actually need this many animations anymore. And I probably don't need the shoot animation anymore. I can probably wrangle where, where that isn't being used. It looks like a very substantial list of animations, but once we create an idle animation, a single liftoff animation, and a single move animation, it's very easy to duplicate the animations and simply change the images and whether it's flipped horizontal. Now this is a liftoff animation. The rotor images here are just two images duplicated until it fills up the one second of animation. The liftoff animation is the only animation that doesn't repeat and the only thing it does is the body and the rotor go from value 0, 0 to value 0, minus 115. And the intention and use of the liftoff animation is it does both the liftoff and the landing of the aircraft. So the idle animation is simply the unit on the ground with its rotor turning. The move animation is the unit in the air and we can see how the shadow is being used here to create the height. And then the shoot animation is just a duplicate of the move animation given a different name. And again, I'm pretty sure that at this point I don't actually need that animation. What's missing from my animation is I forgot to animate the collision shape for it taking damage. Its actual physical collision shape, when it's in the air, is simply disabled by script because it's not colliding with anything then. And I'm going to assume that the aircraft don't collide into each other in the air for the sake of ease. And the damage zone, it's going to need to be keyed in so that the enemies can't simply shoot at shadow and can actually see where the helicopter is because the damage zone location and well I'll probably have to animate the collision shape too because that has to do with its location or compensate in script for the location difference of Y115. One or the other a solution still needs to be found for that and I think that reasonably shows the animations and how they work. And then, let's see, we'll try to find one that's flipped. Which one is flipped? I think east is a flip of south. So, it's just south duplicated and flipped horizontally is keyed in and renamed. So, the list is not that difficult to make and even for me to correct the lack of collision shape animation I can key it in and copy it into most of the things and it's really just offsetting it by 115 along Y and I've gone with very simplified collision shapes so let's stop the animation what I'm gonna do because I'm not good at teaching script is I'll just go over it a little bit and put it on the screen long enough to be seen so I've separated the scripts into its different units so that the main script, the unit script, doesn't have a whole bunch of if you're a tank, if you're an aircraft type of statements. So I'll scroll through with 
the functions on the screen long enough to be able to pause, read through. Um, what I would actually recommend is is screen capturing the unit GD and the helicopter GD and assembling them as images so that you can compare them next to each other and see how they work together because even in here it's difficult to show how they work together so that's the way the script reads now that it's changed we'll put the helicopter script up The liftoff function is questionable. That's actually coming from the box select script in one of the places that I do have if you're an aircraft, if you're a vehicle. And this can probably be revised now. It's probably not necessary. But I haven't done all the scripting revisions yet. So that's the box select script. The bullet script. damage zone is what registers when a thing gets shot or what registers when something intrudes in a few radius enemy control is how the enemy accesses the position 2d nodes that are driving the tank around currently we went over helicopter it's been on the screen the soldier script is pretty short and um, this really cleaned up things in the unit script to separate things like this. Now each of the individual unit scripts has a function called check auto destination and that's where the enemy control script is being used to determine the position 2Ds. The turret GD is not changed. Um, this is where the muzzle is for the turret. It's attached to the turret. And the helicopter will need probably um, several muzzles or a scripting way to have the rockets come out of its different rocket tubes. So that's all the script and hopefully this is a clear and good enough explanation. I know it's not really built for beginner people. Um, it's going to assume that people have a certain level of skill in Blender and are actively learning Godot and taking an interest in doing the graphics in a image software like GIMP. In the next video we'll come back and we'll look at getting some rocket shooting out of the helicopter. And until then, take care.